Hi, everybody. Welcome to another midweek breakdown. And no, I am not having a breakdown. Uh, that's what I started calling these, uh, a midweek breakdown. And what I'm, I'm going to do tonight, what I've been doing uh, every week around Thursday, is, is giving you a little bit of a study that I did uh, for this Sunday morning study that won't actually be in the Sunday morning study. And let me explain. We're going through the book of Acts, and we're in Acts 27 right now, where Paul is on his way to Rome, and there's a storm uh, that threatens the ship that he's on. Now, the storm is, is really common. It's common all across uh, the world. There are all kinds of different storms. If you're by the ocean, it, it may be a hurricane or, or a typhoon, depending on which ocean you're in. Uh, it, it may be a, a tornado. Uh, we just had some tornadoes in the south. Um, we have tornadoes here where I'm at in Ohio. So there are storms everywhere. And, and there's this motif of storms in Scripture. Now, sometimes God sends the storm. Sometimes God shows up in the storm. And, and as I'm studying through Paul in this storm and how he's dealing with it in Acts 27, I, I wanted to go back and study other storms in Scripture. And I, I found out something really interesting. I found out that throughout scripture there, what I did was I put them in four basic categories of, of storms and how the Lord uses them in the lives of believers. And, and I think this is really important because everything we're going through right now, it, it may not be a, a storm like the storms I'm talking about, but, but this virus, this everything going on, there's a storm. There's a storm across the world right now, a pandemic. It's, it's a form of storm. And I think it's really helpful to look at these, how God uses these categories and then ask ourselves possibly, what does this mean? Now, again, this isn't going to be something I'm covering on Sunday morning because I'm going to stay true to the passage and exactly the details of what Paul's dealing with. So I hope you'll join me for that video teaching. But, but tonight, I just want to go through the four and I put them in four different categories, the four categories of, of storm purposes and how God uses them as our lives are right now in a storm. And in a couple minutes, I'm going to end out asking you which one of those purposes pertains to you and how you think God might use this time in all of our lives to grow you, to grow me just for growth. So let's get into it. All right, life in the storm. Now, you, you can see off to the side here, I've got uh, my four uh, different categories. And I'm, I'm going to explain them a little bit. Uh, the first reason for a storm, the first purpose for a storm in Scripture is protection. Now, that may seem the opposite of what you would think about a storm. But if you think about the story of Noah, God used the storm to show his protection over Noah. In Genesis 6, 8, it says this. It says, Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. The Lord was deeply grieved at how wicked man was, at how wicked creation had become. But there was one guy that got God's attention with his righteousness. In Genesis 8, 1, this is while Noah was in the ark. It, Genesis 8, 1 says, God remembered Noah. He didn't forget, even though Noah was in the middle of the storm, God's eye was on him. He was watching over him. And Noah had a protection throughout the storm. Now, it took Noah a hundred years to, to build the ark. And yet it was a great symbol of God's protection over a man that truly cared about him and truly loved the Lord. And, and the Lord didn't just protect Noah, but he protected his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. Uh, and, and protected, watched over his family. And so uh, it was a storm of protection, judgment on the world, but certainly protection for Noah. Well, that's the first purpose of a storm is to show God's preserving power to get us through it. And you see that time and time again, when, when faithful people are, are in storms in scripture, that, that God protects those he has something for on the other side. Anyway, second thing, the story of Jonah. Now, all of us know this. When I was a kid, this was my favorite flannel graph. I don't know if any of you remember flannel graphs in, in uh, Sunday school, but I, I thought 
I must be some kind of Bible whiz kid because of my Sunday school teachers would have me up in front uh, putting little Jonah into the whale on that flanograph. But I found out as I got older that my Sunday school teachers are just trying to keep me up front where they keep their hands on me because I wanted to run around and be crazy all the time. So, uh, but this was a, a storm of correction. No, Jonah gets on a boat going the wrong way, trying to get away from the Lord because he didn't want to go where the Lord had told him. Go to some people and, and share the gospel. And Jonah said, no, mm-mm. He got on a boat heading in a different direction. Matter of fact, in Jonah 1.10, the, the men on the boat with Jonah, when the storm comes up, uh, they, they knew that Jonah was fleeing the Lord <laughs> in Jonah 1.10 because Jonah had told them. Not only was he going the other way, but he got on the boat saying, I'm fleeing the will of my God. So when the storm came up, logically, they asked him, are you the cause of this problem? Because we know what you're doing. And matter of fact, they ask him in, in 111, uh, what should we do to calm this? And Jonah tells them, throw me overboard. <laughs> he, he didn't tell him, take me in the right direction. He said, go ahead and throw me. Out. He'd rather die than go where he was going to go. And we know that God sent the giant fish and, and that gave him protection. But, but this storm was there for correction and it didn't fully work. Because Jonah wasn't entirely corrected. I, I like Jonah 1.14. And even after this, the men on the ship cry out in, in 1.14. Don't let us perish because of him. And they kneel down and start worshiping God. And they make a sacrifice to the one true God. Jonah's God, who is he? He was disobeying. But uh, for them, they were corrected. They found the one true God that was powerful enough. And Jonah was needing some correction. And he would need even more time in the belly of that giant fish to be correction. But uh, so far, we have a storm of protection. We have a storm of correction. And then third, you'll see on here, and I didn't mean to rhyme these, by the way. I started writing them down and the words just kind of made sense. But the third thing is we have a storm of perfection. And you'll see... Uh, the disciples listed there in Matthew 14. And I'd encourage you to, to read through Matthew 14 because it's not just that they're going across the lake and a storm comes up and Jesus comes out walking on the water and Peter gets out of the boat and then he sees the wind and the waves and he sinks. We all know that part of the story. But I want to tell you what happens in, in Matthew 14 right before this. Right before this, they feed the 5,000. And the disciples gather up 12 baskets of leftover fish and bread. And I bet they were in the boat with them, right at their feet. I bet the answer to their concerns about the storm were right at their feet the whole time. That God can provide, that God can take care of you. Jesus sent them across the lake to get away from the crowds. And Jesus said, I'm going to go up and pray and then I'm going to meet you over there. Now they got scared. They weren't sure they were going to make it. And Jesus saw their fear and came to them. This storm was perfecting their faith, was allowing them to see how powerful Jesus was, not only to multiply out the fishes and bread to feed the 5,000, this giant crowd, and to put the answer right at their, their feet in the boat, but he was also powerful enough to walk out to them. And when he walked on that water, Peter wanted to get out, and Jesus was powerful enough to grab down into the water and pull Peter out to safety. The Lord was perfecting their faith, growing them through trials, sending them um, into a storm so he could show them what he was doing and who he was. Surely he is the Lord of all, feeding, walking on water, telling storms to stop. And I love that he, Peter gets back in the boat. The Lord looks out and tells it to stop and it stops. Why? Because our God is the God of perfection. And he was perfecting the disciples to, to trust him more so they could weather storms to carry the gospel forward. And I want to tell you, all of these are going to go into the message on Sunday so I can teach about the Lord, trusting the Lord in, in storms in, in more strength. I mean, uh, Paul would need to know the story of Noah to know that God can protect you in a storm. Paul would need to know the story of Jonah that he needed to probably be praying and checking his motives. Am I listening to the Lord right now? I think the answer for Paul was yes. I think Paul needed to know that his faith, even in tough times, 
was being perfected by all the challenges so he could learn to to more greatly rely on the Lord. Because the Lord doesn't promise that there won't be life in the storms. Uh, the Lord promises that he is stronger than the power of that storm. That he is the life in the storm perfecting their faith well i want to go to the last one and that's where we end up is is paul and, and as i look at it acts 27 as paul is on this boat and this storm comes in and and the, the ship is lost that's where we ended last week that paul said the ship was going to be lost all hope was lost but i'm going to give it away right now i'm going to give the, the ending away a little bit they crash land on the island of malta and the lord is powerful on malta Two major miracles there. The gospel shared there for people that would have never heard the message of the Lord, the gospel of Jesus Christ, his saving work at the cross, his redemption story rising up from the grave, the opportunity for us to get up from the grave if we trust in Jesus and turn away from our sins and live for him, that they would have never known this if God hadn't used the storm to redirect Paul. To give Paul direction and everybody on that ship to take them to Malta because that's not where they were going and they never would have wound up there any other way. But God wanted to get them there. The last purpose of the storm is direction. In these storms, some of us maybe are losing jobs or, or things are changing for us in ways we didn't see happening. And we get to worry about that redirection a little bit. But I want to tell you, God uses storms to direct our lives in new places that we never thought possible. And that's what we see in Paul. So here are the four storm purposes to show us God's protection, to show us God's correction if we're going the wrong way, to show us that God is perfecting our faith, that we can trust in him, that he's stronger than any storm. And to redirect us to the purpose of a storm, to direct us to exactly where God wants us to be. So I got to close this out asking you, what do you need from the storm? Which of these four things do you need from the storm? Do you need to be reminded that God cares for you and he's going to protect you and he's watching over you? you? If, if he watches over the birds and knows when any perish, how much more does he watch over us? And God's goal is to protect us and bring us closer to him. Uh, is there something in your life as we go through this time that, that you need to be corrected on? You need to tell the Lord, I need to get right on this. You know, I'm mad because I can't go to church right now, but I wasn't going to church anyway. When this lights up, I'm going to get in the door, Lord. Whatever you need to be corrected about, you get corrected. I know for me, I've been writing more. And, and I've had a couple people when I did a, a two-week devotional tell me, Pastor, you need to do more of this. I've started on another two-week devotional to, to share out. Because maybe God's correcting me a little, little bit, sticking me at home so I can write. Because I like to write, but I don't like to sit too much to, to get it done. Maybe for you and for me, God is perfecting us so that we trust him more through all of the, this trouble that's going on, through all the worries, through all the concerns. Maybe God is using this purpose to direct us to a new place, to something new uh, that we didn't do before, a new job, a new career, a new future, uh, new people that we connect with, that we connected with during this time. I know for me, I've had a lot more direction to, to connect with my family and spend time with my wife. And I got to tell you, today I, I was struggling with something and my wife was coming through big time. I'm really glad she's home right now. Because I really needed her. So let me ask you. What is it you need in the storm? What do you need? Because this isn't all happening for no reason at all. What do you need in this storm? Do you need to know that God is going to protect you and get you through? Because if you trust in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, he will. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Nothing. Maybe you need correction. Maybe you need to have your faith grow. We all do. Maybe you're being directed to a new job or a new career or something different. What do you need in the storm? Can I encourage you tonight, maybe for the next couple of days, to write those four things down and just kind of make a, a list, make a checklist. Maybe spend some time in prayer and say, Lord, what do I need? How can my faith benefit from the storms of life as I'm in them? 
And maybe you're not feeling this storm, but at some point you will feel a storm. And in that storm, you need to ask, will God protect me? Yes, the result of the storm, if you trust in Jesus, you will be protected. Will God correct me? That is his goal with every believer, to, to use the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to correct us when we're going a different way so that we go the way he wants us to go because he's our captain. He knows what's best and he loves us. Do you need to be perfected? Is there some area of your life that you doubt and you, you control and you hold on to? And right now, maybe that's being taken away from you a little bit. And you need to learn in the storms of life that you don't have control. And you need to trust the Lord that he will perfect you and grow you. Maybe as your faith gets worked in the storm, you'll come through it stronger and ready to trust the Lord more. Maybe you've been without direction. And God is giving you some right now. And sometimes we fight those changes. But the Lord knows what's best. And as we trust in him, he's going to get us through. So what will the result of this storm be for you? Well, I hope that was helpful. I, I hope as I went through those four things, there was maybe one you identified with. There was something that, that pulled you in. And maybe you have another purpose for the storm that I didn't mention. I, I'd love to for you to comment and, and tell me what that is. I'd love for your feedback on this. But if you need prayer for any of those four areas also, let me know. If you want that prayer request to be private, just, just tell me. And I, I won't share it with anyone. But, but I want to make sure we all get what we need in the storm. Because uh, there were a lot of storms in Scripture. But people came through them differently. And God worked in them specifically to work with what those folks needed at that moment. And I'm praying tonight that the Lord works with you specifically to give you exactly what you need. Because that's who he is. He's the God of all, but he's also powerful enough and big enough to be your God and to give you what you need. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for all of my friends that watch this, Lord. I, I pray that you would be the one to use this storm in the right way for our lives and we would do our part by responding to it properly. Father, if, if we need to be reminded of your protection, help us to be reminded you protect those who love you. If, if we need to be reminded of your correction, Father, help us to be reminded that you correct us if we're yours and we go astray. Father, if, if we need to re be reminded of how you perfect us like diamonds under pressure through a storm, remind us that you're in the perfection of faith business and we can trust you and we'll trust you even more when we get through. And Father, if you're doing any of this in our lives right now or allowing any of this in our lives right now to redirect us, Father, help us to see your direction and your hand. Father, I don't believe that, that you are always the cause, but I do believe that you are the one that benefits us even through the worst things in this world. And Father, I pray that we would depend on you and rely on you and look for you that we would ask which of these causes is best for us and what we can do, and that we would put your, our hand into yours and allow you to lead us. Father, you're the best. You lead personally, but you watch over all of us too. You're amazing and wonderful. Help us to trust you and you alone in every storm. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friends, that's it. Hope it was shorter than a regular message, and I will see you all soon. Thank you.